Hello, back with another video. The first, fear no one but Jesus Christ. Fear no one at all on earth. Fear only Christ. All right, um, okay. And also, if you have a Bible, read this. Yeah, okay, cool, very important. But um, <laughs> this video is about Reven Sums. So, Reven, ah, sums, yeah? Okay, so what Reven sums are, they are rectangular approximations of the area under the curve. Um, so first, let's get notation out the way, yeah? All right, so um, if you have this, you're talking about a left Riemann, where n is telling you the number of rectangles you're using. And of course, of convenience, we want the width of the rectangles to be the same. Okay. But it does make sense to talk about Riemann sums where the width of the rectangles are not the same. Um, that's left Riemann. And then right Riemann would be like, um, ah, that's an r, and then n, right? Okay, again, n telling you the number of rectangles you're using. So for example, if I write L4, that's uh, left Riemann rectangular approximations of the area under the curve using four rectangles. And again, we want the width of the rectangles, which we'll shortly call delta x, we want it to be the same. And then right Riemann. Now, if you want me to recommend arguably the best calculus book ever, it's simply called Calculus by Michael Spivak. And um, there he uses slightly different notation. So for um, left Riemann, he says this. Uh, which is L and then F and then N like this. So he's saying left Riemann for the function F and this is saying how many rectangles. And for right Riemann, he doesn't use um, R, he uses upper rectangular approximation. So U and then F and then N like that. Yeah? Okay, cool. So, and that's just notation. Now, crucial to your understanding of the rest of this video, is going to be what I'm about to do next. By the way, uh, we're not just doing left and right, we're also going to do midpoint and trapezoidal rule. So um, trapezoidal approximation of the area under the curve, that is. Uh, so a very thorough discussion here. So um, yeah, to understanding all of them, you need to do uh, the following, or we should do the following. You don't need to do anything, just keep watching. <laughs> okay, so um, this is why. This is x. And the function I'm going to use is uh, going to be this function, which is, um, which is going to be um, f of x. Uh, I'm going to make it like less steep so that we can draw rectangles on it and stuff. Uh, sorry, you know I'm drawing a quadratic, right? Or I'm attempting to, let's say. So let's say that this is um, f of x is equal to 1 quarter x squared like that yeah okay cool now notice that f of x is just uh, another name for y so this is equal to y so then specifically if this is um, x1 or better yet x0 um, notice that this little bit from here to here that little bit this here represents f of x0. So it's the y value corresponding to uh, the input x0, right? Okay. And it doesn't matter where I draw a vertical line, it will represent uh, the y value for that x. So if this is xi, you know, or like it's x5, whatever you want, um, then this height, right, uh, represents f of xi, right? Okay, very, very important to the rest of what we're going to do. All right, I do have an eraser, but okay. <laughs> All right, I need to redraw this, sorry guys, uh, because uh, yeah. Now, so like I'm intentionally picking this function, you can use a more exotic function, but Let's use this function, so that way, uh, that way, sorry guys, um, 
that way, you know, uh, we demonstrate on a simpler um, function that way. Um, it's, <laughs> sorry, I said, I, I said that way so many times. Um, <laughs> so, so, that, so that, you know, like, we, we don't make it complicated uh, and therefore about the function. We make it about the topics, the Riemann sums, right? Okay, okay, okay. So um, let's say that on this function, it's going to be the same function I wrote earlier. f of x is equal to a quarter x squared on this function. Let's look at, um, let's say that this is um, x equals 1. And let's go to x equals 5. And let's say x equals 5 is right here. Mm. I'd love to use a ruler, but let's see if I could do fine without a ruler. So we've got that, right? And then um, x equals 1 is that. Now, uh, let's first do left Riemann. So let's do L4, right? So then we're using four rectangles. And so we need to divide the interval from x equals 1 to x equals 5 into four equal parts. So uh, let's see. Uh, this is a decent job. Sorry, guys. Uh, like, maybe right here is beta. And then, <laughs> like, right here, yeah? Okay, so one of our rectangles for left Riemann is going to be this. So you see, for the height of the rectangle, I'm using uh, the function's value on the left end of the interval. So obviously, if this is x equals 1, and I'm dividing the interval from x equals 1 to x equals 5 into four equal parts. This has got to be two, this has got to be three, this has got to be four, right? So I'm saying I'm using um, f of 1 as the height of this rectangle. And so on the next rectangle, which will concern this width, right? First, we have this width, and this is delta x. Clearly, delta x is equal to 1. Since we said that we're going to use uh, rectangles with the same width, this here is also delta x. So therefore, equal to 1. Delta x again, del another delta x. But the point is that for left Riemann, you use uh, the left um, endpoint on any interval and evaluate the left endpoint into the function so as to get its y value for the height of your rectangle. Okay, so we go, all right, this is our second rectangle. That's for left Riemann, obviously. And then uh, our third rectangle, right? And then finally our fourth rectangle. Okay. Now, um, so then I just have to add up the area of these four rectangles. And that will be my approximation of the area bounded by x equals 1, x equals 5, and this uh, parabola, a quarter x squared. So we're trying to approximate the area exactly in here. But obviously, we're under approximating it because we've got this part, this part, this part, this part that the rectangles are missing out on, right? But let's go ahead and write what this is. OK, so this is going to be what? Uh, it's going to be um, f of, and this in this case, is going to be f of uh, 1 times delta x plus um, f of 2 eh, times delta x plus f of 3 times delta x. Now, so far, I've done this, right? I need one more rectangle, and that's f of 4 plus f of 4 times delta x. Obviously, the convenience we created in making all the delta x is the same is this, which is from this, I can factor out a delta x. So I've got delta x times f of 1 plus f of 2 plus f of 3 uh, plus um, f of 4, right? OK, cool. So that's about it. Now, obviously, to find f of 1, uh, we need to plug in here. And that's a quarter. So uh, just for this, I'll finish it. And delta x, we already said, is 1. So we'd have 1 times, um, and then it's going to be a quarter. f of 1 is 1 fourth, plus f of 2 is 1 fourth times 2 squared. So that's 1 fourth times 4. And so that's 1 plus. Um, so this is this here, and uh, this is this here. And then f of 3 is 9 times uh, 1 fourth. So that's 9 over 4. Plus f of 4 is 16 times 1 fourth. That's 4. So 
This here is the best we can do um, as far as approximating the area under the curve and yeah, between these two x values and bounded by the x-axis also. And I'm not much of a number cruncher, so I'm not <laughs> uh, going to enjoy like saying what this value is, so you do that. Uh, but <laughs> I am going to show you how we can generalize the left Riemann. So in general, if I have um, ln, right, for some function f, it looks like if I call, um, this is crowded, so if I call this first x, if I call it x1, or I could call it x0, but let's just go with x1, and then this is x2, this is x3, blah, blah, blah. Now, I can use as many rectangles as I want. Obviously, the more rectangles I use, the better the approximation of the area, right? For example, if we double the number of rectangles here, what that would mean is that, like, we'd have another rectangle here, right? Uh, that, like, obviously, I just, like, uh, did a little bit better as far as, like, the over-approximation in this part, right? So the more rectangles you add, the better your approximation. In fact, in theory, what we do is, notice that now I have delta x over 2 here, delta x over 2. So in theory, what we do is we send delta x to 0, meaning we're using infinitely many rectangles. So as you see, if I keep dividing the rectangles into smaller, smaller, um, like, portions, that is, if I make the width smaller and smaller, like, my approximation keeps getting better and better, right? And therefore, in theory, when there's infinitely many rectangles, I'll have the exact area. Okay, cool, cool, cool. But let's generalize the left Riemann is what I said, so let's start there. So if um, we just get rid of these and say, like, this is x1, and then we'll have some x2. Again, we're making the delta x is the same. Um, and then um, we have x3, blah, 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 all the way to some xn. Right, obviously just before it will be x n minus one. Ignore the fact that my rectangles are now like messed up, like some of us. <laughs> so 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 what do I do? Well, I'll have delta x since Again, we're going to multiply uh, by delta x for uh, the area of each rectangle as we have to involve the width of the rectangle, obviously. Each part is going to have a delta x in it, so I could just factor it out. So factor out the delta x, right? And in, in our example, uh, the delta x was 1, so that was a little trivial. Usually it's not 1, and so in fact, if it's not 1, it's easier to see how you factor it out and stuff. Um, you can see it, like if it's 1 half, you can see 1 half everywhere, so you know to take it out, but, but you get it, you get it, you get it. Okay, so I go delta x, and then I'm going to use um, f of um, x1, right, and then plus f of x2 plus dot, dot, dot. Notice in our example, the last x was 5, but we didn't use 5, it's 4 that we terminate on. So then the last uh, x that I need to evaluate f1 has to be x uh, sub um, n minus 1. And actually, let's say that this is, uh, well, yeah, we can say that that's x sub n, but let's call these x sub i's. So instead of x sub 3, let, let's say that this is some x sub i. So you have x1, x2, dot, 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 and some middle x that we're calling x sub i. Uh, and so then this can be x sub i um, minus 1. Sorry, guys. Uh, so let me keep my x3 here. So x1, x2, x3. My bad, guys. And then dot, 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 some x sub i, dot, dot, dot. Finally, x sub n is our terminating n. Yeah? Okay, okay, okay. So what that means is that we can write the left Riemann in general as being this. It's going to be, it's going to be the sum of uh, delta x. So I'm going to use sigma to uh, succinctly write it. And it's going to be um, f, of, uh, f of x sub i, right? Uh, from um, i equals 1, so from f of um, x1 times delta x, all the way to, where should I go? I should go to n minus 1, right there, yeah? Okay, so this is the left Riemann sum in general. Now, if you just understood my example and you didn't need the general form, then that's okay, but that makes sense, right? Okay, 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 okay. All right, and so we're done with the left Riemann, and there isn't... Uh, much more to say about it, but I can say this. Notice that the left Riemann doesn't always under-approximate the area. The reason why the left Riemann under-approximated our area is because our function is always increasing. 
A function that is sometimes increasing and sometimes flat is called a monotonically increasing function. So if you have a function that's either monotonically increasing or strictly increasing, then the left Riemann will always under approximate the area and the right Riemann will always over approximate it. However, notice that if our function is decreasing, then the left Riemann will over approximate the area, right? These, this is how the rectangles are going to look, right? Okay. And if our function is always decreasing, the right Riemann will under approximate it, so they kind of roll swap. All right. Okay, okay. So um, the right Riemann, right? Uh, the right Riemann then is going to be this. Uh, maybe a blue marker would be handy right now, just about right now. I threw it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, where is it? Blue marker, blue marker. Um, guys, I don't know, pause. Oh, it's right here. Okay, actually, I didn't throw it. So, all right, so for right Riemann, all we're doing so that we can save some time is like, uh, on this interval from x1 to x2, we're going to evaluate f at the right end point. Uh, okay, so it's not a misnomer. <laughs> and this time we're over approximating Again, the right Riemann over approximates and left Riemann under approximates that our function is always increasing. And then uh, the second rectangle is going to look like this, the third like this, and the last rectangle is actually going to use the height here, right? So like way over approximates it in this case, according to my visual, right? Okay. And what Spivak says really neatly in that calculus book is that, like the real value of the integral is when the left Riemann and the right Riemann are the same value. Yeah, and of course that happens when delta x goes to zero, right? Okay, okay, okay. But um, yeah, you get it. So I don't think there's too much to say here because uh, we see that what we're gonna write is like uh, in general, and I'm only gonna write the general version. We're gonna write delta x and then um, times Again, you should see why we can factor out a delta x with delta x times, and it's going to be f of um, x2 and then uh, plus f of um, and then x3 plus all the way to this time we're going to go to f of x n. So this would be in our specific example where we had had a 5 here. It's going to be f of f of 5 right here. Yeah? Okay. Um, but you should understand this. All right. So how do we write this succinctly? I need a plus sign right here, don't I? Uh, we write this succinctly like this. Uh, using sigma, we go. Okay. So it's f of xi um, and then plus 1 because I want my sigma to start with 1 from i equals 1 to n and of course delta x. And finalement, right, finally, if, um, you know, this, this point, the left end, x1 is called a, and then xn is called the value b, then notice that delta x, if we're using uh, the width of the rectangles being the same, delta x has got to be b minus a over n. Right? Okay, okay, okay. So that's that. Um, so then who's next? Next, let's do the trapezoidal rule. And I don't think uh, we could <laughs> draw more on this. So unfortunately, we have to draw again. Um, <laughs> all right, so here it goes. Uh, y and then x, all right? So our function is, um, our function is like this. Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you redraw. Okay, so this time we're gonna use the midpoint rule, so just pretend like that's at zero, zero. If it's the midpoint rule, uh, then if again we have x1 here, and we let x1 equal one, and then we go to um, x5 here for a concrete example, and let's say x5 is five, and again our delta x's are going to be one, because uh, we're gonna use uh, four rectangles again. But this time, again, we're using the midpoint rule. And you'll see that the midpoint rule does a better job than both the left Riemann and the right Riemann. So how exactly? Well, uh, un, deux, trois. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I'm teaching you French while I'm teaching you math. You're welcome. <laughs> OK. Um. <laughs> Humor myself, x2, x3, x4, right? Okay, so, so right here, and right here, and right here. 
Okay, the midpoint rule does not lie. What it does is it uses the midpoint um, between any two um, x's that are at the end of the interval. So uh, it uses this point, this point, and this point, and this point as the height of the function. <laughs> that my blue marker would have been real nice just about now, but I threw it away. So, um, okay, <laughs> here it goes. Um, so like this, right? You can already tell that like y does a better job because it over approximates the area a little bit and also under approximates it a little bit. But that's not what I should be shading. What I should be shading is my rectangle. Yeah, we're still using a rectangle, but um, this is what we're doing. We're doing delta x is still uh, b minus a over two, oh, sorry, over four, we're using four rectangles. And so that's four over four or one, right? Um, yeah, this is two, this is three, and that's four, right? Okay, but uh, what I'm gonna do is do delta x, maybe I scoot a little bit to the left. I'm gonna do delta x times, and then it's gonna be f of, well, it's gonna be f of the average of one and two. That's how you find a midpoint, right? Like, if I have like, if I have five here, and then I have 11 here, if I, if I do five plus 11 over two, that's a 16 over two or eight, that's exactly the midpoint, right? Okay, so you just average the x's, add them and divide them by two, right? And so then I'm gonna do f of, f of three over two. And you could have been like, yeah, like 1.5 is between one and two. Fair enough. <laughs> okay, and my next rectangle is uh, going to have height right there. And so uh, it's gonna look like that, right? Okay, and my next rectangle is going to have a height right there. So it's going to look like that. And my final rectangle is going to have a height right there. And so it's going to look like this. Right, okay, cool. So uh, this is what the approximation is going to be. It's gonna over approximate a little, but it's also going to under approximate a little, and therefore why. This is not a proof, it's just like, you know, a verbal argument for why it does a better job. Um, okay. So, uh, but you can't have your own opinion about it, it's clear. <laughs> Maybe I'll do a proof on a different day uh, if there's enough interest. All right, so it's obvious that next I gotta do f of uh, five over two. That's for that right there. And then next is like three plus four, that's seven divided by two, so uh, f of seven over two plus, uh, <laughs> and finally f of, um, nine over two, right? The end. If I was, uh, you know, just doing it for our function, which again was f of x equals a uh, quarter x squared, this suffices, right? And uh, yeah, uh, but let's generalize this. Um, okay, so if we generalize it, again, you know how to find delta x, so we already said it, b minus a, eh, b b minus a over n, that's delta x. And then we'll have delta x found this way times, uh, let's see, so we'd have, let's, let's see it at play here. We'd have f of um, x1 plus x2 over two plus f of x2 plus x3 over two plus blah, 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 f of, plus f of x4 plus x5 over two, right? That's what it would look, and we're multiplying that sum by delta x. So how does that look generally? Clearly it looks like f of, um, sorry, no, f of um, xi plus xi plus one all over two, right? And uh, I don't need this parenthesis, so I could just have delta x here, delta x, sigma, um, i equals one. So when i equals one, I get x1 plus x2 that's one plus one under x as a subscript, right? So f of x one plus x two over two times delta x, and then sigma says add, add to that what? We'll move on to the next integer, so two is i next, so f of x two plus x three over two. Ah, it's an agreement, d'accord. Um, <laughs> all right, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, too much fun. Um, and then obviously I want to end on, um, f of x n there, so I should let 
this b n minus one, right? You get that uh, because um, right, like because if n is five, then here I'll have like so when n is equal to five, th my top here is going to be four, right? But then I'm going to have f of x four plus x five over two, and that's exactly what we have to end. So <laughs> this should be n minus one, and voila. Okay, catch my breath. I've done that before, okay, slightly, slightly. Um, so next, let's do the uh, trapezoid, right? And man, I really don't want to draw this quadratic over, so let's see if we can get away with like, uh, time lapse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone's like, this guy, he's so weird. No, oh, I'm sorry, guys. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. On wheel. <laughs> okay, okay. This time we're going to use the uh, trapezoidal rule, right? Okay, so uh, let's see. So right there, and then right there, and then right there, right? Okay, and uh, and uh, right. Okay, these midpoints aren't necessary, so actually let me get rid of the red dots that were signifying the midpoints of um, teams. Yeah, yeah, you get it, you get it, you get it. Okay, so, so, so. Uh, let me like go over my quadratic, even though you can see it clearly. Let me go over it. This is not a drawing class, so uh, yeah. Although pretty good, pretty good, right? <laughs> okay, so my first trapezoid, it's actually going to be hard to see. So where can I draw the trapezoid? I'm going to draw the trapezoid right here because it does such a good job that like in these parts, like it almost like looks like it's overlapping on uh, the quadratic, uh, but it's not overlapping on the quadratic because the quadratic is concave up, right? And so if you have a concave up um, item, then this here, which is called a secant line, will lie above it. So like... You know, like, let's use a magnifying glass and zoom in there, but whatever, you see it there. Okay. The point is, the trapezoidal rule does a great job. Um, okay, so what do we do here? Uh, well, let's talk about what a trapezoid looks like. A trapezoid, well, normally it's like these, right? But if we have it sitting with this being here, then the trapezoid looks like this, right? And uh, and uh, the trapezoid looks like this. And uh, well, for any one of the trapezoids, if we take any arbitrary trapezoid, right? Uh, say uh, say this one, the last one, then this right here would be f of x five, and this like right this base of the trapezoid. Normally, this here and this here are the bases. So this here and this here are the bases. This is f of x five, and this is f of x four. Got it, and this is delta x, right? And um, if anyone knows the area of the trapezoid, it is uh, base one plus base two divided by two, so the average of the bases times the height. So the height normally is this right here, delta x, right? Okay, so I just said the area of the trapezoid is f of x4 base one plus f of x5 base two all over two times uh, delta x, right? There you go. Okay, cool. So, in our example, what would we do? Well, this is just the, the area of this trapezoid. So, since, you know, we labored a little bit, let's write it. So, um, f of x4 plus f of x5 all over 2 times delta x. See? The reason why I preach you follow Jesus, believe what you want to believe, but he's, first of all, the real God, and second of all, when you have Jesus with you, you fear no one and nothing. <sighs> okay. All right, so what do we do here? Well, the first trapezoid, yeah, if, like, you know, we do what we did over here, it's going to be uh, f of x1, uh, well, I need to scoot left, sorry guys, f of x1 plus f of x2 <laughs> all over 2, and then times delta x, maybe I need to write smaller, well, we know that the delta x is going to be factored out, right, like, because it's the same for all of them, delta x, delta x, delta x, delta x, and this is the difference between any two x's here, right, 
and so we can factor it out and it's going to save us some space right so uh, let me use square brackets delta x is over here i don't know if it's still in your field of view am i am i no okay <laughs> okay <clears throat> so so um like let me write smaller f of x1 plus f of x2 all over 2 right okay and then i'm gonna have to this plus well we factored out the delta x so my bad so i'm gonna add to this plus the next trapezoid is going to be f of x2 plus f of x3 divided by 2 times delta x so f of x2 plus f of x3 divided by 2 times delta x i factored it out remember plus next is going to be f of x3 uh, plus f of x4 divided by 2 times delta x delta x is all the way out there yeah yeah okay okay so i'll just do dot 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 um, dot 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 Oh no, <laughs> plus f of, so, so I'm skipping like one trapezoid, namely this trapezoid, right, okay, uh, so I'm going to the last trapezoid which we already wrote, and the delta x is factored out, so it's f of x4 plus uh, f of x5 um, all over 2, right, okay, cool, now, notice that this dividing by 2 happens everywhere, so why don't we take out the two on the bottom, which is really like multiplying by one half, right? Let's take it all the way out with delta x. So this is over two right here. Ah, look, look, look at what's happening. Like right in here, the guy we skipped, well, once we take out the denominator and put it with delta x, the guy we skipped here, or the girl we skipped, is um, f of x3 plus f of x4, right? Yeah? So what's happening is, um, lonely, I am so, <laughs> this guy and this guy, which are the left uh, most points. Yeah, well, I'm not an English teacher. Um, the left end points, well, the left most and the right most. See, I do know what I'm talking about. Those two are by themselves so lonely but the rest of them well there's two of them this fella there's two of him this fella there's two of him uh this fella or this gal there's two of her him well yeah it's either him or her not them whatever that means okay um all right so we have delta x over two times f of x1 we could write this more succinctly because we know now it's two f of x2 uh plus 2f of x3, and so we can fit it in, yeah, cool, 2f of um, x4, and then plus a single lonely f of x5. All right, so obviously, you know, in our construction, this was 1, and this was 5, and so that's 2, that's 3, and that's 4. So, you know, just substitute for x1 with 1, and with 2, and so on, and crunch the numbers. I'm not going to do that. I told you already, I'm not going to do that. Um, so... I'm going to conclude then by generalizing this, right? So generally, uh, the trapezoidal rule will mean for whatever function you're using, it will be delta x over 2 and then uh, times um, f of, f of, um, f of, um, sorry, why, why is it hiked up? I don't have to divide it by 2 anymore, my bad. f of um, x1, um, right? Um, I'm trying to generalize this, right? So how do I say this? Yeah, f of x1 um, plus uh, 2 f of x2. I'm not saying any more than what I have there. <laughs> okay, so plus dot 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 plus um, f of um, x. Well, 2, yeah, I'm kind of generalizing it. f of x and uh, minus 1 plus a single f of x and right here, right? Can we use sigma here? Well, it's a little inconvenient, but of course we can. So this is how we can use sigma. So we could be delta x over 2, and then um, f of uh, x1 plus f of xn. These are the only lonely guys, or gals, uh, being multiplied by delta x over 2, as with everyone else. But the rest of them, there's two of them. It's a pair for the rest of them. Um, okay, so plus. And then here, I want to go. Um, Two, and I could write the two in front of the sigma, right? So plus two, and then it's going to be f of um, x i, where I want uh, I want to say that uh, i goes from two 
right? This is the first guy that has uh, two of himself. Uh, so actually he's marrying himself. So it's maybe like a really lonely person. <laughs> okay, I know I'm so funny. I laugh at my own jokes. Um, and minus one. And then, yeah, that's it, right? Again, I mean, like, am I having fun or what? Like, of course I'm having fun. Why am I so happy? Because that's what happens when you get closer and closer to Jesus, people. Duh. Bye.